This latest paper is looking at the potential for repurposing the PDE5 inhibitors, so um, Tadalafil, Sildenafil and Vardenafil. So these are drugs which are already something of a repurposing success story in that they were developed for um, angina, that didn't work, but then they were redeveloped for erectile dysfunction and they've been hugely successful for that. Um, uh, but these drugs have a number of effects which make them very interesting in an oncology context, uh, particularly when it comes to their effects on the immune response. And that makes them quite exciting drugs, especially as oncoimmunology is a, is, a, is a really big field. And although there's been huge successes there, there's a challenge uh, to increase the number of patients who respond to, to these treatments and to extend the period of, of response. So these drugs may be quite interesting in that context. Okay, and what is it about their mechanism of action specifically? Uh, the mechanism of action that's particularly interesting with these drugs is that they seem to target um, populations of immune cells, particularly myeloid-derived suppressor cells, which are implicated in the um, uh, protecting tumours from the immune system and therefore by targeting those the immune system gets a chance to attack the tumours and we've got evidence from a number of animal models where the effect is clearly shown only in animals with intact immune systems and not in mice that are immunocompromised. And well, can you tell us about some of the key findings from this paper then? Uh, the, some, well, one of the interesting findings from this paper is that um, there is a, a huge amount of data that's already there and, the, and it's already being picked up by investigators. So there are some um, very encouraging signs of uh, clinical trial activity using these drugs. So for example in, in Canada there is a, a trial coming up called Periop4 where they're looking at adding a PDE5 inhibitor and an influenza vaccine at the time of surgery for uh, gastrointestinal um, tumours and the idea being that the combination of a PDE5 inhibitor and a primer from a flu vaccine will encourage the immune system to kick in at the time of surgery and clear up any stray tumour cells that have escaped during surgery. So that's a very interesting, very novel approach to explore in a clinical trial. Yes, I was just about to ask, with the uh, action on myelosuppression cells, it seems like a combination therapy would be a key avenue for bringing these to fore. Yeah, the, um, I mean, although there's some evidence that there are other mechanisms of activity, say it targets tumour hypoxia, in some sensitive cell types um, it's pro-apoptotic, -ap um, it does seem that the Im immune response um, is, is the key finding. But on its own, it's not enough. It needs to be combined with chemotherapy or a, a checkpoint inhibition or, or some other mechanism. So it, these drugs are, are definitely add-ons to existing treatments rather than novel treatments for monotherapy. And you mentioned earlier how this has gone from treatments for angina through to erectile dysfunction and now this repurposing. Is there any common link between the repurposing targets which you've discussed with eCancer before? This is the ninth paper that we've published um, with eCancer looking at different drugs. One of the interesting uh, things about these is that all of these drugs um, have been developed across very different disease areas, but they have uh, uh, multiple targets, multiple mechanisms of actions. So in contrast to the way drugs are developed now, where you have one specific molecular target, these drugs seem to have multiple targets. So we should start thinking of these as multi-targeted therapies which can attack relevant pathways uh, that are common across different cancer types. Very few of these drugs are specific to one tissue type or one cancer type. Does that multi-target activity, well, it does them some service in their now intended use, but does that open up any possible conflicts of action if they're used in combination with other chemotherapy agents or immune therapies? Uh, ov obviously, whenever you're combining drugs, there's a, a question of how they interact. Uh, and and uh, one of the 
issues for the clinical trials is although we know these drugs are very safe so we can skip the phase one trials to, to establish that they're safe on their own, we need to, to, to run additional trials sometimes to check are there interactions with, with the standard treatments in a, a number of cancers. But that still means that we can take advantage of what we know about the, the dosing, the mechanisms of action, the side effect profile. So that still puts us ahead of where we would be with a, a de novo molecule that's just been developed in the lab. Can you think of anything else about the paper or your experience in uh, repurposing to mention now? Um, I think what's interesting is um, we've been partnering with eCancer for uh, quite a while now, developing um, these papers. And in the beginning, repurposing was seen as something a, a little bit left field, not quite part of the mainstream. And yet we've seen at ASCO um, results of trials using metformin, repurposing is on the agenda across different cancer types. So it's been a really positive um, growth in the last few years of, of interest in drug repurposing. I think working with eCancer has definitely helped raise that profile.